snow in Exeter. Who'd have thought? Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be going through the 3D printed components um, from the last video and also going into a little more detail about the robot that you saw in the first video. Also we'll just be doing a few miscellaneous activities such as painting and things like that. But again, I'll try to keep you guys as updated as possible. Right, so from the 3D printing and laser cutting that was done yesterday, so this new base plate, that is what was laser cut yesterday. Um, for the bits that are on the bottom, those are little ball casters uh, that will be used to help move around. Um, and the little washers, I don't think you can just see on there, but the little washers in there, those were also laser cut yesterday. Inside of the robot, you can see there's a small battery. Um, that is a lithium ion battery. Correction, lithium polymer. Um, there have been quite a few issues um, in terms of that, just because of safety stuff. So particularly at Exeter, there's a lot of regulation on when you can use um, lithium ion batteries. Correction, lithium polymer. Um, so there have been a lot of safety hoops that we've got to go through. Um, but in the end, it's just mainly having to charge it in a fireproof bag and to make sure that you're present at all times in use or on charging. So the other robot that I've just showed you, that was just a base, um, whereas this one is more of a finished product. So you have the top plate, um, the different supports on there, uh, and also the temperature sensor on the back, which will be helping with temperature mapping. So that will be linking in with the coordinate system and then sending all of the data uh, to MATLAB with processing. And then solar panel on top, to charge the lithium polymer battery. Finally! Um, which is stored underneath there again. These are the little LiDAR brackets um, that were being 3D printed yesterday. So 3D printing has taken place and they've all been cured. These are the final um, LiDAR chips on their brackets, all bolt bolted up and everything. So the next stage for this is to implement it on the robot and to be positioned under the main top plate. Right, so we've just added uh, another layer of paint to the wood in the background. We probably just need one more coat later in the week, but that's another good job sorted. Although I say I, it's more they and me watching. Anyway, so the first job for this morning is to attach the LiDAR chips and the brackets on to the top plate. So then we can determine which one's the front one, which one's the left, which one's the right, and which one's the rear. So then. With the code, we then know this for the coordinate system. So we finally got one LiDAR chip working. Um, we've had to take the whole robot apart. Uh, just to try to get it working but finally one single one is working on the main circuit so now the next task is to integrate that in with the three other sensors a few hours later right so finally got all four lidar sensors working on the main assembly as you can see we're getting four lidar readings so that's good that we're now getting it all integrated into one system. Next, the job is to then integrate the motor driver in again to get all of the functions working at the same time. So from showing you the coordinate system last time, it's now time to implement that in code. I've learned my lesson from last time, no detailed maths. I apologize for putting you through that. Coding can be very, very, very frustrating at times. Why won't you just work? Sometimes just missing off a colon can cause everything to go wrong. But I'll crack on with this and I'll see you guys on the other side. Following on from all the 3D printing that we did last week, some of you guys might be wondering, where are we getting these components from and how are we actually printing them? So the way we're doing this is through 3D modeling, which I'll just go into a little bit more detail now. So this is the program we use for all our 3D CAD modeling. 
where CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. This program in particular is called SOLIDWORKS. This is what the University of Exeter uses. There are multiple different CAD programs out there. So SOLIDWORKS is a good starting foundation, also used in some commercial companies, but also software such as AutoCAD and stuff like that, which is more generic, although AutoCAD is more to do with 2D stuff. So as you can see on the screen, this is the CAD model for our robot as it currently is. So if we just spin this thing around, in particular for components such as the temperature sensor on the front, which you can see there, and then the LiDAR brackets, which are 3D printed last week there. And as it's seen earlier in this video, the wheels and the, and the motors, the things in the yellow that you can see there, these have all been inputted on the CAD model, model to try to gain a representation of what it will actually look like once all the components are finished off. Also in terms of spacing, so you can see the little ball caster down there and the processing chip, the WiPi uh, 3.0, which is just being defined as this box at the minute, just as a general representation of the design. It's mainly there just to make sure all the components fit together nice and neatly. So when you're doing the final work on it, then nothing is wasted. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it again. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down below and any comments and suggestions for future videos. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you on Thursday.